Welcome back everyone to the next part of Higher Biology Unit 2, Metabolism and Survival, which is the growth and metabolism of microorganisms. Here we have a look at different types of microbes to begin with. This includes archaea, for example, thermophiles, such as Thermosocraticus for PCR, bacteria and eukaryotes. There are mul multicellular filamentous fungi, uh, which need an energy-rich uh, food source. Microbes are generally highly adaptable, living in all sorts of different environments on the planet, using a variety of substances for growth. We use microbes to create useful products, make a wide variety of different things, beer, wine and bread and antibiotics. Uh, there's exam examples and they're produced on an industrial scale. We also use them for research and industry. Now we use microbes generally because they are easy to cultivate. They reproduce and grow quickly. The growth substrates required for them are relatively cheap and their metabolism can be manipulated relatively easily. If we look at environmental control of metabolism now, the environment can be controlled and metabolism manipulated easily to ensure the optimum yields of the product that you're using the microbes to make. When growing the microbes, they need an energy source for growth and in terms of unicellular algae, this could be light or uh, some kind of substance uh, contained on a, a some kind of growth medium. If we look at the different types of growth media, uh, they can be grown. Microbes can be grown in liquid broth or solid agar, such as uh, solid agar in a petri dish, or in this uh, McCartney bottle, such as a, a nutrient agar slope. Or, of course, as we well know, microbes can be grown on an industrial scale uh, in fermenters. Now the growth of the microbes depends on the chemical composition of the substrate and of course the environmental conditions in which those microbes are grown inside the fermenters. If we have a quick look at the chemical composition of growth media, all microbes are going to require carbohydrates for energy, for respiration, and sources of nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur uh, in order to produce amino acids, proteins and nucleic acids when the cells divide. And some may, of course, require fatty acids and vitamins. In the fermenter, the environmental conditions. Firstly, aseptic techniques are used to uh, set up the growth media. Uh, you don't want contamination by other microbes. And using the fermenters, well, modern fermenters, allows the conditions to be monitored and controlled using computers. Now, industrial microbiology these days involves fermentation referring to aerobic and the anaerobic growth of microbes on a big scale. Inside industrial fermenters, the factors affecting the growth are temperature, oxygen concentration, pH and glucose concentration. All these are monitored using sensors and allows us to keep things at an optimum level for maximum growth. And of course, when the desired concentration of product is made, then the whole process can be brought to a stop. In terms of patterns and growth, uh, growth is the irreversible increase in dry mass of an organism and it occurs when the synthesis of organic material exceeds its breakdown. Now for microbes, dry mass is used less frequently uh, and instead we use cell number because if you were to take even a very, very large population of microbes and dehydrate them completely to work out dry mass, it would still result in a very, very small mass. So, looking at the growth of unicellular organisms over time, at the time for a cell to divide and produce two cells. So, time taken for a cell to divide is called generation or doubling time. So, let's have a look at the actual uh, different rates of growth over time for microbes. Now, the, such a curve will be like so. And in different uh, sections, we can split that curve up. First is the lag phase, then the log or exponential phase of growth. Then comes the stationary phase, followed by the death phase. If we look at each of these in turn, in the lag phase, there's little or no increase in cell number. That's because the microbes at that time are uh, synthesizing the enzymes uh, required to break down that growth medium. Next comes the log phase, and the cells are increasing in number at a maximum rate providing no factors are limiting, of course. Then comes the secondary phase, uh, the station, stationary phase, rather, where the exponential increase uh, doesn't continue. Uh, nutrients 
that the microbes are surviving on begin to run out, and secondary metabolites, which are those substances not required to make new cells, start to increase, uh, such as antibiotics in fungi, such as penicillium. And the growth rate equals the death rate of the cells. Finally, we have the death phase. The nutrients begin to run out, or there's accumulation of toxic substances, and the death rate exceeds the growth rate. Some microbes can survive this kind of period as resistant spores, and the living cell numbers decrease. We are able to plot growth curves using uh, a semi-logarithmic method. It allows us to show the growth rates as differences in the gradients of the slope. So if we were to plot the growth rate from the table that you've just seen uh, on semi-logarithmic graph paper like so, that growth rate would be shown as a straight line, like so. Finally, looking at controlling metabolism, there are two basic types of metabolism that microbes may show. First of all, primary metabolism. This occurs during the growth phase, and substances are broken down to produce energy by respiration. And primary metabolites for the actual growth of the organisms uh, are produced. Uh, in secondary metabolism, however, occurs at the end of the log phase and during the stationary phase. And secondary metabolites, which are not used for the production of new cells, as we've seen, uh, begin to be produced. Okay, that's the end of that section. Many thanks.